On this beautiful morning, I have the pleasure of being at the Extra Perennial Nursery with Ken Kor Korpowski. And one of the things that I think is really great about this place is you are not a chemically dependent nursery. You grow your stuff here. What, what does that mean? Well, that means is what we do is grow our plants without any chemical fertilizers. They're grown in a natural pH balanced soil, which makes them easier to grow. The roots form naturally, and you get a more natural looking plant. And I would think that in that, in that environment, they would be a much better transplant into the people that are purchasing them's yard because there's not a bunch of chemicals forcing them up. That is correct. Yeah, they don't go into uh, any type of a shock situation, and uh, they just look healthier, and the roots seem to go deeper into the ground without and those chemical And it makes perfect fertil sense that that would happen. Now, when we were talking earlier, we, uh, you had told me, I think, about about 90% of your stock is actually more of a shade woodland type plant. And we, you, well actually you and your lovely wife picked out some great examples here. So I wanna start over here and just give me a little information about these things. These are some gingers, are they not? Yeah, these are actually the wild gingers. These are, uh, <clears throat> this particular variety here is Splendens, which is uh, native to China. Uh, has some wonderful <clears throat> variegated foliage that, uh, and also these plants are evergreen. They're more of a clumping growth habit and they grow in more of dry shade conditions. This one here is another one. This is I Callaway. Love this, one. this one here is actually native to the southeastern United States. And this one here has an abundance of small reddish white type flowers which uh, bloom right uh, around springtime mm -hmm. is when they first appear. The same with the Splendens. Now this looks like it'd be almost more of a little uh, clumper type. Yeah, these are out. clumping varieties. They okay. do not spread with rhizomes, but they will get, you know, bigger as they mature. Sure. Now, we are ever, I can't imagine who doesn't love hellebores. And you picked a couple out here. Which, which are we talking about? Okay, this one here is uh, called Ms. Betty Rainicar. This one here is a white double flowering hellebore. Yeah, a stunning bloom. This one has one of the whitest blooms. It has some of the really frilly type flowers. Uh, very, very attractive. Uh, another one, uh, this one here is called Ivory Prince. It is a cross between a Sternii and a Niger. Now this particular variety here, it's only been out for at least two years. The flowers are more upward and outward facing and it has uh, white flowers with a little bit of green on the inside and the back of the petals have these red tints. It's very, very attractive. And a prolific bloomer. It I, is. The amount of blooms on one stem are just amazing. Yeah, they're one of my favorites. And they do have a lovely evergreen foliage because in the spring when the new stuff comes up, you, you know, that's when the old stuff dies down. So you, you really have constant, constant, uh, some kind of structure. Yeah, in the good plant. foliage for the for the season. I'm really glad you picked this one. It's one of my favorite plants. And tell me a little bit about it. Okay, this one, this plant here is commonly known as the black mondo grass. As a matter of fact, it is not a grass. It is actually in the lily family. Now this particular plant here, it has these small whitish type pink flowers that form later in the season, around say June or July. And after they flower, they set these little berries on them, which come up, uh, form green, then they turn black, and they last all the way through winter into the next year. Now, one particular note of interest on this plant, they say that this is fairly slow growing, but the way we grow them here is the higher you plant the plant in the soil, mm -hmm. the faster it will grow. If you plant them too deep or ah. mulch too much on the plant, it'll have a tendency to grow slower. Well, that's a, a key it, it's, a, point. it's a great, great fill and plant for a shade garden and great texture and color. Now, speaking of favorites, I, this is my newest one. <laughs> I, in fact, I'm, I'm going to end up having to buy one of these today before I leave. This fern is exquisite. Give me a quick rundown on this. Okay, this particular fern is, uh, the common name is a the plumbed soft shield fern. The uh, Latin name is a uh, Plisticum Cetephrum Plumoso Maltolobum. I know well, that's it's easy a, for you to say. <laughs> I know it's a mouthful, but it's a very attractive fern. It's it, low growing. It it's stunning. It only gets about eight to ten inches high, and it'll form a spread of approximately thirty inches. Um, it is 
evergreen, as we've discussed. It has a tendency for the ends of the fronds to curve at the ends, which makes it very, very attractive. But one of the key features on this particular fern is that the new fronds, as they unfurl, will unfurl pure white as it, they come up. It's, it's a stunning, stunning creature. It is. Well, Ken, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have finally gotten to meet you and come out to your nursery. And if any of you are looking for great woodland or shade-loving evergreen perennials, this is the time of year, and a great time of year, I might add, to come out and see them because you're going to see really what they would look like in your own yard. Uh, if you want more information about Extra Perennial Nursery, you can go to Gardentime.tv, click on our website, we'll throw you over to their website, give them a call, they'll give you directions. It's a great, great little trip out here. It's in a beautiful setting, wonderful out in the country. You'll love it. So, Ken... Hey, Thank you so much. Thank you, William. We we'll look forward to seeing you again. I appreciate it.